What up, what up? Inside of this training, we're going to be talking about delegation. We're going to be talking about account accountability, and we're going to be talking about autonomy as well. All right. And the theme of this training is going to be autonomy is earned, not given. All right. One of the big mistakes that I think leaders make, and I've made this mistake as well, so uh, don't think that I'm void of making this mistake, is that we uh, gift autonomy too early in the process with a staff member, and it can cause a lot of issues for your department, it can cause a lot of issues for you, and it can cause a lot of issues for the staff member. All right, so autonomy has to be something that is earned and we're going to talk about the four-step process on how staff members can earn autonomy in this video all right but before we do that i want to talk about why is it so crucial not to just gift staff members autonomy why is it so important that they do truly earn their autonomy in the company all right so i got six reasons here so number one and this one is a very obvious one. If we gift autonomy too early, the likelihood of things falling through the cracks is going to tenfold, right? The purpose of having uh, delegation and accountability is to make sure that things don't fall through the cracks. And as things fall through the cracks, projects are going to get messed up. KPIs are going to get messed up. Culture can even get messed up. And things, excuse me, things are going to feel very chaotic. So Reason number one, why it's important to make sure that autonomy is something that is earned and not given is uh, preventing things from falling through the cracks. Number two is a low performance, all right? If we gift an individual autonomy and they did not earn that autonomy, the likelihood of them performing at their highest ability is going to drop, which is once again, a disservice to you as the leader, a disservice to your department and a disservice to that individual as well. And the third reason is less individual coaching, all right? If we are just gifting staff members autonomy, they are not going to get the individual coaching attention and feedback that they need to maximize their potential. So that's reason number three. Reason number four, lower department culture as a result of limited coaching, feedback, and accountability. Once again, if we give early access to autonomy to a whole entire department, they're not going to get the coaching, the feedback that they need to truly accept sell. And if that's happening at the each, if that's happening at the individual level, it's going to happen at the department level as well. And that's going to drop your culture and it's going to drop performance, which are synced together. If performance drops, culture drops as well. All right. Number five, it could even cause a sense of entitlement. If you give a staff member early autonomy, too much trust in the beginning, that's what they're accustomed to, which, like I said, it could create this sense of enti entitlement where when you do go to try to hold them accountable, they are so accustomed to having the free range, to having the autonomy, and they are so not used to being held accountable that they actually give you pushback, right? And it has that built-in sense of entitlement that, hey, I don't need to be held accountable. I've never been held accountable. This is just the way things are. So that's why it's so important early in the beginning to follow the four-step process that we're going to talk about because it could remove it could remove the option or the ability for an inv individual to feel like they have this autonomy early and have this entitlement early. All right, so those are the six different reasons why it's extremely it's extremely important and extremely crucial that autonomy is earned, not given. All right, I wanna talk about the three things that happen positively when people do earn their autonomy, all right? So when we build staff members up to the point where they can be autonomous, it does these three things, all right? Number one is it gives you the ability to train them how, how you want them to be trained. So if you're staging out the delegation process, if you're staging out the uh, building of autonomy process, it, it allows you the opportunity each step of the way to train them how you want them to be trained. If you just give an individual autonomy right off the bat, then basically what that means is they are figuring it out on their own. And that may not be the strategies that you as the leader, as the leader of the department or company knows to be successful, right? The reason that you've earned this position as a leader or the owner of a company is because you know what works, all right? So that's why it's so important to make sure that you train in the beginning and not give autonomy so that they follow those same patterns. All right, number two, uh, when autonomy is earned, not given, the positive is it creates better management staff relations in terms of expectations 
and working through shared struggle. So what I mean by that is when you have this stage process of delegation and building towards making a staff member autonomous, during that, during those times where you are more hands-on, the staff member is learning what you expect of them. All right. And more times than not, when staff members are unhappy or underperforming, it's because they don't know what's expected of them. They don't know what they should be doing. What is the result that they're trying to drive? And when you follow this process, built into the process is them is them learning exactly your expectations. All right, the second part of this is it does create a greater bond. What creates bonds? People going through shared struggle, right? You have a good marriage, you probably have gone through shared struggle, right? You have a good relationship with a friend, you probably have gone through shared struggle. Same thing is true with leader staff member. You have to go through shared struggle together. So when you follow this four-step process that we're going to talk about in the beginning, there's going to be a lot of shared struggle. There's going to be a lot of miscommunication. There's going to be a lot of things that are challenging that you guys have to figure out together. And as a result of figuring that out together on the other side, you're going to have a much stronger bond with your staff members. So really crucial. This is one of the biggest reasons probably why you need to follow that notion of autonomy is earned, not given. All right. The third positive reason here is when autonomy is earned and not given, it truly allows a staff member to improve. So when they are more autonomous, they're building off a foundation of expectation. So what I mean by that is when you follow the four-step process that we're about to go through here after I make this last point, it once again creates the foundation of what they are expected to do. So when they have earned the ability to be autonomous in your company, they are building off of that expectation, right? Because what's the positive of having an autonomous staff member? The positive of having an autonomous staff member is they can think of new ideas and better ways to do things that the leader or the owner of the company has not thought of yet. Well, the only way that they can truly do that is learning what the company is doing right now. All right. So that's why it's so important to have this process because they're learning the expectations of how the company operates now. So when they are autonomous, they can create beyond, uh, beyond that measure, beyond what's already been created. All right. So I've been teasing it. I've been talking about it. What are the four steps? All right. So these four steps, I um, uh, an individual that will never take credit for something that isn't mine. I learned this from Layla Hermosi, and I'm passing it on to you. All right. So these are the four stages of delegation. And I believe actually she told me she learned this from somebody else. So isn't that, isn't that the truth with all information? It's just passed. It's just passed down. Right. But let's go on. All right. So you have investigation delegation, you have informed progress, you have in, uh, informed result, and then you have full autonomy. All right, so once again, these are the stages to making a staff member fully autonomous within your company. All right, so number one, investigation delegation. This is the easiest form of delegation. And this is the first step that you will do with a staff member when they come into your company. All right, so this is an adage that everyone can relate with, but maybe you've been an intern before, maybe you haven't been an intern before, but when you're an intern, literally the very first step of becoming an employee, you do the most basic thing, right? Like the, the, the old adage is, can you go get me a coffee, right? Like that, when you think of intern, that's what you think of. I'm not saying that's what investigation delegation is, but it's very simple forms of delegation, probably a more appropriate one. And one that it would actually be practical is going to get you information, right? Like, Hey, can you get me more information on this? Or, Hey, can you get me a data point on this? right? Trusting them to go find you the information that you need to make a decision. All right. That's investigation delegation. They are helping you invest to gate so that you can make an ultimate decision on whatever it is that you're making a decision on. All right. So that's very, that's the very first step. When a staff member does that, and does that repeatedly, and you fully trust them to investigate the things that you need investigated so that you can make the correct decisions, then they can graduate to the next phase of delegation. All right, and the next phase of delegation is going to be informed 
progress. All right, so informed progress is they have more responsibility now. Now they're probably doing uh, tasks that actually move the needles, not just tasks, but also projects that are really moving the needle forward. But the way in which it's delegated is different. It's informed progress, meaning there are going to be different checkpoints. Let's just say it's a project. There are going to be different checkpoints throughout the project where they are updating you on where they are at. The reason that this is the next phase is because if they made a mistake and you have them check in at this particular checkpoint, you can go back and reverse that error before they get too deep into the project. If they're only reporting to you when the project is done and they have all these mistakes, now they have to start over from scratch. So informed progress is not only good for you and the project, but it's also good for the staff member as well because we can catch their mistakes early, we can coach them on the mistakes, and then we can reverse the error to what it needs to be in an appropriate manner and appropriate time. All right, so the second one is informed progress. Okay, the third one is informed result. All right, so you've done informed progress a bunch of times. They're consistently getting it at each checkpoint. Excuse me, at each checkpoint, there's there's limited to error, limited to no errors, and you really trust them now to be able to take a project and really execute it. All right, so that's when they graduate to what's called informed result. So informed result is you give them all the information that they need to execute the project successfully. And I'm just using project as an example. It could literally be anything to execute the thing um, with with how, how you're expecting. So you're going to give them all the information up front. They will only check in with you when they are done. So once the project is done, they will submit their work. You still will review the work. And then from there, um, you'll either make edits or the, or the project will be completed and they absolutely crushed it. All right, so that's informed result. It should take some time to get to informed result. Not everybody in your company should be at informed result. Informed result should really be the individuals that are higher up in your company and they have really earned that ability to take a prod, take your expectations, take a project, crush it and submit it at the end. All right. This is where majority of our high level individuals in NLCA are at as informed result. All right. The last one is full autonomy. All right, so full autonomy, somebody has to be with you in executing informed result for years to achieve full autonomy. All right, so usually people are, stay at informed result for a while, but if somebody is with you for years and they're executing an informed result over and over and over again, then you can move them to this final stage of full autonomy. All right, so full autonomy, you're still going to give the expectations to a project, right? And then they're going to go ahead and run and run with it. But there's so much trust built in that you're not really checking in as much on the actual work. They're fully autonomous. You trust that they are doing what you are asking of them or uh, expecting of them. With full autonomy, they also have the ability to execute on their own thoughts and ideas. Now, I would say that if you do have an individual at full autonomy, they should run those thoughts and ideas by you. The, the CEO of the company or the leader of the company, if it's, or sorry, the um, leader of a department, if you have people in your department who are at this stage, unlikely, but could be, could be a possibility, they should run those ideas by you and you should still sign off on those, but then they can go and execute that idea with full autonomy, with free think, with the creative genius that they have earned. All right, so those are the four stages of earning Full autonomy. All right. So once again, you have investigation, delegation, you have informed progress, you have informed result, and then you have full autonomy. All right. Two additional very important notes. Okay. This four step process is not always linear. All right. Somebody can fall backwards, somebody can earn full autonomy. And then maybe over a bunch of times, they make some errors, they make some significant problems in the company, and now they're moved back to, to informed progress or informed result, right? And same thing is true. Somebody can earn informed result, they make some mistakes repeatedly, you have to move them back to informed progress. So this isn't a linear progression. People can move backwards. All right, the second really important note that I want to drive home here is accountability 
is not just taking their word for it. All right, this is a big mistake that I see. Somebody, let's say you have a report, right? An end of the day report, and somebody says that they completed this thing, right? You don't always want to just take somebody's word for it, right? You want to be able to go back, review the work that they said they completed, and find any errors and be able to submit those errors, especially if that individual is in informed progress, right? Because you're doing that at every checkpoint, you're reviewing their work. And also, if they're at informed result, they're at informed result, you're still going to want to go back and look over the final result that they submitted. But that is a big mistake that I do see leaders make is they just take the person they're holding accountable, they just take their word for it, and they don't actually review the work. All right, so review the work, go to wherever they're submitting the work and look at it, try to find the errors, and then you can give the feedback there. And also find the positive things too, right? Feedback doesn't always just have to be about the problems. Feedback can be about the positive things as well. All right, that is going to conclude. Wow, I can't speak. That is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace.